So I honestly had no idea there were so many styluses for the iPad. And I'll be honest with you, after using all these styluses between the random Amazon brand, the Logitech Crayon, the Adonit Pro 4, Adonit Dash 3, Adonit Note Plus, a couple of random nub styluses, there really isn't anything that comes close to this Apple Pencil. Why? Because Apple got it right with the second generation Apple Pencil. But at $130, it's pricey. Apple tax. So are there any alternatives that come close to the Apple Pencil? Depends on what you do most. For notes, there's several. For drawing, only one of the Adonits might suffice. <laughs> I've been reading on the rumor websites that there's going to be an Apple Pencil Generation 3. This is Generation 2. Really? Yeah. Why are we doing this video then? Well, we need a baseline so that we can compare the Apple Pencil 3 when it comes out, right? Yeah. That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> so for the rest of this video, we are both going to show you, both Val and I, we both talk and show, usually it's just I talk and Val shows, um, what's going on. The best pencils, we're going to show you how we tested them. We're going to show you the best styluses for note takers. We're going to show you styluses for the best non-note takers. What do you mean, non-note takers? Well, people who don't take notes, but still need a stylus. Hmm. Isn't that what they are? So like, artists, creatives, architects, and here you're designers. Well, people who like to color, yeah. tattooists, oh, kids. Maybe kids. <laughs> When it comes to design, the Adonit products and Logitech Crayon have metal casings to them. Personally, I don't think this makes a big difference, but it's you know kind of neat to pick up a metal cased pen, we'll say. Most of these products, except for the simple nub ones, all have batteries that need to be charged. The product with the longest battery life is actually this random Amazon Apple Pencil at 20 hours. As a side note, does anybody else find the charge port at the top of the pencil kind of distracting? The stylus with the worst uh, battery is the Logitech Crayon at seven hours. The Logitech Crayon charges via lightning cable, and most of these products have some sort of fast charge capability to them. You charge it for an hour and a half and it gets you most of the power in the pencil. Honestly, if plugging in your pencil is a big deal and it is kind of annoying having to plug your pencil in, uh, then you're going to go with the Apple Pencil because it just charges on top of your iPad. It's just very, very nice that way. So Aaron forgot to mention that most battery products need to be turned on by either holding down a button or tapping the top. Despite being a subpar product, if clicky pens are your thing, then the Adonit Dash 3 is worth getting. Especially if all you're doing is just replacing your finger with a tapping stylus. When it comes to palm detection, the only products that didn't have it were the simple nubs. Now this isn't going to matter for people who are just looking to replace their fingers with a stylus, but the moment you try to write or draw, well, your palm's gonna get in the way. Each product here, other than the nub product, comes with replacement tips, which average between five to six bucks per replacement tip. The only product here with a different tip is the Adonit Pro, which was something I was introduced in my first Adonit stylus back in the early 2010s. I was really impressed with the plastic disc tip then, not as much now, because, well, the Apple Pencil's just so much better. Out of all the other products, excluding the nub ones, um, they all look like fake pencils with plastic tips. When it comes to accuracy, the simple nubs were the least accurate. What you see is not where the line goes. All the other styluses looked quite accurate. Now there are a couple of other advanced features such as tilt and pressure sensitivity, but we'll get into those in the next two sections. Now for the next two parts, we did our testing on a variety of different iPads with a variety of different screen protectors. For any sort of stylus stuff on the iPad, we're partial to matte films and our general go-to is a Bellamon screen protector. The Bellamon has a finish that's more paper-like than others that are actually called paper-like. However, the increased texture will result in faster tip wear. Now using these styluses on Glass screen protectors on unprotected iPad glass is generally very, very terrible. And if you are going that route, then you can definitely get silicone tips, which add a bit of friction, kind of like the matte screen protectors, uh, to your stylusing. If that's a word, stylusing. You basically need one or the other. You don't need both from my perspective. Now, I also wouldn't recommend using a traditional normal glass screen protector on an iPad if you're planning on doing a lot of stylusing. The thickness of most glass screen protectors is around 0.33 millimeters, which will definitely interfere with the sensitivity of the stylus. That's what we found out with glass screen protectors, and that's what Apple says in their accessory guidelines. We've had a lot of success using the thin glass screen protector that comes from Bridge, um, but it's smooth like glass, but it doesn't have the scratch protection of glass, which is, you know, odd. So with note taking, this is where the usability of simple nubs kind of falls apart for two reasons. Reasons. The first is that your palm is going to get in the way 
all the time. So you end up having to write with your hand kind of perched above the screen, which, you know, is fine for one or two words, but any sort of long session note taking is gonna get very, very tiring. The second thing is that the granularity of your notes taken with these simple nubs increases significantly. It looks like the difference between writing with a felt marker and a 0.5 millimeter mechanical pencil. When it comes to note taking, you can easily get away from not buying the Apple Pencil because pressure sensitivity isn't going to be a big deal when you're making simple drawings and noodling out your thoughts. Both Val and I placed the Adon at No Plus in fourth place. The slight spring in the step was actually very noticeable while writing. The slight spring coupled with the on and off contact of note taking just made it very, very, I'll say annoying. And the stylus tip was a bit too smooth. It almost felt like we were taking notes on non-matte screen protectors. It was just that slick. For me, there was a tie for second between the random Amazon brand and the Logitech Crayon. And I think the reason is just because they both feel pretty good to write with. Um, like it feels pretty accurate and it doesn't have this like click that the Adonit one has. Like the tip moves a little whenever you're, you're writing and it gets kind of annoying. Um, so yeah, these two were tied for second for me. For Aaron, he liked the shape of the crayon, but the friction on the random Amazon brand was slightly better. And in the first place, well, it's the Apple Tax product because it's just, this thing just works so well. So if you appreciate how we do our videos, consider getting your stuff through our links. Why Val? Because we're reviewers, not influencers. We paid good cash, our own cash, for every one of these styluses. This video wasn't really that expensive to make because, you know, they're only like, 40 bucks. So in total, it was like, I don't know, four, $400, $500. Damn. That is a lot. That's still a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> but if you feel like, no, don't feel like, get your stuff through our Amazon links. And if you want to take your support further, check out our Patreon page. All right, let's keep talking about pens, styluses for your iPads. Now, when it comes to drawing, the only products that we uh, considered uh, were the ones that had tilt sensitivity, which were the Apple Pencil, the Rando Amazon brand, the Logitech Crayon, and the Adonant Note Plus. Now between these four products, only two had pressure sensitivity. When it comes to tilt sensitivity, we couldn't find a difference between the four products. The angles were all very, very similar, and they all could detect varying degrees of tilt. Now for drawing, the clear winner, again, is the Apple Pencil, with its app-independent pressure sensitivity. You just end up having a lot more control over your strokes, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not an artist, but to get over some of the content block I occasionally have, I do end up doodling out some meaningful phrases in my life and you know, the Apple Pencil offers the best doodling experience hands down. Now as a side note, I did let my in-house expert at drawing my three-year-old have a crack at drawing and whoa, my poor, poor iPads, there's just so much stabbing going on. And a close second, you have the Adana Note Plus. Adana claims that it has 2,048 levels of sensitivity, which is a very large fluffy number and it's a claim that I have no idea how to test, but it does record the sensitivity based on how hard I'm pressing or not. But the downside with this product is that it only works with certain apps. Just be aware that it's not as handy as you have to keep track of it like, uh, well, actual pencil. And from our testing, the tips on the Note Plus wear a little quicker. This is what the tip looked like after my three-year-old went to town on it with my iPad. For about 10 minutes, there's chunks coming off of it. Out of the dozen and a half cases that we've used, there's only three that keep the Note Plus securely enough from our perspective, which include the ESR Sentry Stand with its pocket on the back and the ESR Urban Premium Folio Case with its elastic holder. The spec balance folio is close if the latch doesn't come undone. For keyboard cases, the only ones that will store the Adonit Note Plus securely are the Logitech Folio Touch and the Slim Folio. Now another reason why these two products, the Adonit and the Apple Pencil, are our top two picks for drawing is because they've got multi-function buttons. The Adonit actually has two, whereas in the Apple Pencil has, well, its stock double tap thing. But the problem with the Adonit is that it only works with certain apps. So this app that I have here is Concepts, so works with that so you can draw you can draw you can undo the drawing the top button you can pull out the color wheel which is pretty cool uh, so those are just kind of quality of life things that are really nice when it comes to these uh, styluses the nice thing about the Apple pencil is that most of the fun most of these apps have that stuff kind of baked in right you just don't have to set anything up uh, it just kind of works, which is nice about the Apple uh, Pencil. 
Now outside of the two pressure sensitive styluses, the next best is gonna be this random Amazon brand. I'm oddly impressed with all these Amazon brands because they all look like an Apple Pencil, magnetically attached to the iPad, though they don't charge. And you know, there's a neat feature where you have to press the top to turn it on, it's kinda of neat. And because of this simple feature, we like it better than the Logitech Crayon. Now, there's nothing bad about the Logitech Crayon. It's still a very good stylus, but it doesn't stand out against any of the other products in this video. It's great for note taking, but honestly, it's called the Crayon. And we don't like drawing with it, so that's, you know, ironic. So after all that, as we said at the beginning of the video, there isn't anything that beats the Apple Pencil. Like it just, it's an Apple product designed for another Apple product. That stuff usually works really well, except for, you know, the clear cases for the iPhones, but that's another story. Um, if you need an alternative and you're not particularly, like you kind of bounce between note taking and drawing, what's the product that you and I both agree on? The fake Amazon, what is it? The random Amazon the brand. The random Amazon brand. And if you watched any of our videos in the last while, we generally do not promote any sort of brand from Amazon, but because they're like a dime a dozen, there's so many companies that kind of sell this knockoff version with like the charge port at the top. This works so well. And for me, it's because it just attaches to the iPad at the top magnetically. It doesn't charge, which kind of stinks, but at $40, that's, that's a pretty good deal. Like I just, yeah, I can't think of any other reason. Like I couldn't think that simplicity and being able to keep this stylus on my iPad at all times um, outweighs the benefit that this Adonit uh, Note Plus has, right? Sure, pre pressure sensitivity, that's great, but this is easier to use than this. Did I miss anything? No, I think you covered everything. I covered everything. So if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, Monty, what do you do? Uh, click subscribe, again, un unsponsored content is what we do, get your stuff through our Amazon links. Apple Pencil Generation 3 is probably gonna show up soon, so stay tuned for that content. I think that's all we got. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> wow, that tequila's fast. <laughs> zoom, zoom, zoom.